So we're starting out with a simple scene with a little wall here. We're going to add some stylish graffiti to it. Uh, right now we just have a brick wall, but I'm going to replace that using the randomized bitmap shader. So if I just connect this instead to the base color map, you will see we get a bunch of the default uh, default texture and uh, I'm just going to put it in a UVW transform connected to the UVW input here so I can actually kind of scale this down set a tiling of 5 for it and uh, as you see right now it's just a randomization of the default bitmap and nothing else I can put back my brick wall as the background uh, and we open up a randomized bitmap and we look at what parameters we have there. Obviously we have the bitmaps itself, there's 10 of them. I'll explain how to use more later, but we're going to pick one of these little graffitis that one of our in-house designers made. And we're going to intentionally turn off the only randomness that is happening in this scene. As we see by doing it this way, everything is in a completely uniform grid where everything exactly fills up one grid square no more no less I can make that more obvious by putting in a different background just temporarily I'm going to use the same UV map and gonna put in this cell noise which is also working in squares of uh, size 1. So if I change the tiling here, we'll see this ch changes. So now we see everything is confined to its grid square. And now we play some settings here. Uh, first thing I'm going to look at is uh, notice that this image should really look like this. It's 1270 by 800 something pixels and we see the aspect ratio is kind of off here. What we can do is to use the pixel scale. So we say 1270 which was the width that will now be the scale of 1 and that automatically solves the pixel aspect ratio for us. And the other benefit this has if we do more than one image in this case we uh, can actually take an image that is a bit bigger like this one and tell it to use two different images. This actually even bleeds outside the square because this was a little bigger. So you can use big uh, images and small images and that way get a, uh, a different object of different sizes. If we play with the random scale like this, uh, we see now of course it's smaller and goes up to be bigger, pretty obvious. One important thing here though is that it's done uniformly. It goes from the point 0.1 scale in both axes to the 2 scale in both axes. Uh, so they're kind of randomized together. If I uncheck uniform scale, will find that it instead re randomizes these independently. That makes the aspect ratio change again, so we get a really wide one, get a really thin one, get a really tall one, etc. So for most use cases, you want the uniform scale to be on, I would say, uh, most normal use cases. Now, a warning. If we start to turn the scale up a lot, and let's turn down the probability here, which is how many of these things we see. It starts to get obvious that something is wrong. Stuff is getting cut off. Why are things getting cut off? Well, it has to do with the way the shader works. And this is the reason I showed this basic random grid. Everything is working with the, this, the grid square and its closest neighbors to fill those in from something that originally came from the center square. But if it leaks further than this one row of neighboring square, it actually will get cut off. You can fix that by turning up the overlap down here. So turn up the overlap and you see now it can bleed out. That's because this center square can now bleed into two squares. But uh, and in both directions, it could bleed out in the both directions. But that 
actually hurts performance a little. We used to only think about 9 squares, now we're thinking of 25 squares. Set it to 3, you'll be thinking of 49 squares, etc. And that is more processing. So don't do that unless it's really necessary. Now, of course, we can uh, play with the position as well, uh, randomly, and the scale as we did, rotations. Obviously, the artist was could be leaning plus minus 45 degrees when he was painting. Let me turn up the probability a bit again, so we get some more work here. Hue, saturation, and value. These are tweaks of the hue, so it's an addition to the hue. It's a shift of the hue, really, technically. It's a scaling of the value and a scaling of the saturation. This means that if we set the min and max shift to the same, say 0.4 in both cases, all these uh, formerly purple things now turn green. So they're all the same, they're all we, we shifted 0.4. Obviously the more useful thing would be the something like this, where we change it, and now of course we see um, the various hue shift. Let me put back our brick wall background, by the way, so we see what we're doing. There we go. Uh, playing with the saturation, I find that while you can do super saturation to make anything look nice on a brick wall like this, you probably want to stick with lowering the saturation a bit. And of course you can randomize the alpha. So you can set a minimum maximum alpha here, how, how transparent it will be. And there's like a gamma tweak, which kind of looks like a combination between brightness and uh, saturation tweakage. And of course the probability can go really high or really low. And there's even a clumped probability here, which if we use that instead of the base probability, we'll find that things tend to show up in certain regions. You see now there's a bunch here, but not so much over there. And if we switch the random seed around, maybe turn up the base probability a little down this, we can get some fairly natural looking placements with this. Although I'd say that the clump probability is more intended for use case like flowers in a meadow or something, where they tend to kind of grow in clusters. And this third parameter is actually a scale factor of the randomness that drives the clumped probability. Obviously, we're only using two images now, so let's pull in a bunch more. We take a UFO logo and a Christmas tree and a Hello World and some trasher thing a tag of some kind, smiley face, a pff, some love, never hurt anyone, and this one. Turn this up to 10, using all the 10 ones, and by playing again with the random seed, we can get all sorts of different, fairly realistic of graffiti. Maybe not for a hero shot like this, but for a background you want a train to drive by which is all graffitied up, you can just go with it like this. So it's pretty powerful what you can do with the randomized bitmap. If 10 is not enough, you can simply cascade the outputs of one randomized bitmap to the inputs of another. Remember hooking up both the alpha and the color uh, outputs though. And you can do all sorts of fantastic things with this. And just to be clear, this is all Arnold so far, but I did an experiment earlier rendering this in V-Ray. And if we want to be really adventurous, we could try render this in good old scan line. Let's see what happens. There we go. Enjoy. Let's show a small example of that clumped probability uh, feature. So here I uh, cut out some flowers and made 10 of them and if we open up the 
preview window of this randomized bitmap we'll see that it's a bunch of these flowers and you can see they are kind of clumped up in bunches and that has to do with these settings on the probability you can think about it as this is like a base probability and this is a random probability uh, by a noise function and this is the scale of that noise function so if we see if we change this number we'll see that uh, we kind of change the 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 uh, the scaling here of how small or how big these clumps are and uh, turn them the other direction the clumping gets bigger and more pronounced so if we turn down this one it gets more evened out the more we turn it down the 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 less pronounced the clumping is. At zero obviously the probability is completely uniform at point 0.1. Um, in theory we set it to point 0.5 because the, the randomness actually has a positive and a negative sign so uh, and it obviously only adds to the probability if it's positive. So in theory if we set both to point 0.5 we should have the uh, C kind of the valleys and the uh, ridges of the probability but obviously if we start off of a lower base probability we'll have areas with zero probability which makes it easier to see what's actually going on if we try this in a scene we have a little teapot in the meadow kind of thing going on here and I made this uh, it looks kind of fake 3D because there's actually two planes, one with the grass on it and one with the flowers on it. It's a cheat, you see the flowers doesn't even have any stems, <laughs> they're just floating in the air above. But uh, yeah, so there we have the clump probability and of course the random seed affects uh, that randomness too to an extent. But um, yeah, it's it's very useful for these kind of situations for the flowers in the meadow because purely randomness even random it doesn't look natural this is not how flowers grow some of the clumpiness makes it look much more realistic in that case it's a happy little teapot standing in the happy little meadow very nice Let's make that meadow a little more psychedelic, shall we? Because why not? In turn of uniform scale and yeah. I think the teapot is even happier. In TDS Max 2019 Update 2, we added one new feature to the randomized bitmap, which kind of makes it useful for things like tiling. So let me make an example of this. I will hook up a UEW generator and set the tiling to 6x6. Six six. Now we see, of course, all these tiles are identical because in the randomized bitmap, I just uh, turn off all the randomization. They're exactly the same. But we would want to make two versions of this where the tile is rotated, uh, not rotated, and rotated 90 degrees. So we set the rotation to 90. And of course we get this result. Yeah, we get random rotation between 0 and 90 degrees. But that's not really what we want in this case. We want either 0 or 90 degrees. So we have this new parameter, rot steps, rotation steps, which sets the number of steps of the rotation. Although 1 is like the special case for doing it the old way, doing it you know, continuously as we see now. If I set this to 2 now, it will use two steps, so only 0 and 90 degrees. So now we only have it rotated either not at all or flipped 90 degrees to the right. If we want to do all uh, 360 degrees, we can try this, say 360, 
and uh, four steps and be confused. Wait, what's wrong? Well, if you think about it, the four steps we actually want is 0, 90, 180 and 270. The final step is actually 270. So this is what we want. Now we have all the four rotations. And so, now, so I had four different tiles as well that I prepared earlier, like in the cooking shows. If I turn them all on, we see now we have something like a tiling pattern that might be used in on the floor in some bathrooms or similar like that. Random tiles at random rotations. Uh, I can make this perhaps more obvious by picking uh, an arrow here. So we see that we have all the various rotational directions. By the way, when you're doing tiling, uh, I think about the fact that we have the UVW row offset one, which by default offsets everything by half in the U direction, which is you know the, the default setting. It's not a hyper advanced tiling; it just uh, offsets. Uh, alternate rows here, but uh, it's at least something you can use to do brick walls or or things like that. So it's kind of useful to add together with this feature to get very interesting like inlaid wood patterns and stuff like that. Enjoy! <laughs>